Welcome to Twin Pair Tutorials. Today I am talking about how ADGA, American Dairy Goat Association, shows work. It's a little bit complicated, um, but once you get it, you've got it. Um, ADGA shows are different than things like meat goat shows where there are point systems. Um, it may not be like any other show you've ever shown in. Um, so it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but hopefully I cover everything today so you feel comfortable heading to your first dairy goat show. I will tell you also that you really need to pay attention and listen when you are at a goat show because often there's not a PA system and things can change at any time and no one's going to tell you that you're not in the right place or you're not paying attention. So it's on you to be keeping up with things as the show goes on. Um, but before I get into that, I also want to thank our Patreons. And if you learn from this tutorial, please consider joining us. We are a cadre of dairy goat lovers who really value dairy goat education. And that's why I do this. So when you are signing up for an ADGA show, they can be one ring, two rings, three rings, even four rings. Now there are different shows. There's a senior doe show. So this is for does over one year old who have an udder. Um, there are junior doe shows and then there are buck shows. And sometimes they will put all of these shows together. But what you need to know is your senior does and your junior does never show against each other. Actually, even if you are going to a show that has both, a senior doe show is considered separate from a junior doe show. Now, uh, in an ADGA show, typically you are only shown against your own breed, whatever purebred breed of goat you bring. Um, however, there is sometimes a class called AOP, which means all other purebreds. Um, so if the show doesn't have enough entries in a particular breed, like let's say they only get a handful of Alpines and a handful of Nubians, they might combine them and make them actually show together. Um, however, typically the breeds show separately, Sonnens, Nubians, Nigerians, and so forth. Now, to compete in an ADGA show, first you must be eligible. So first of all, this animal needs to be registered and tattooed. Um, when you check in for the show, you are going to need to show your registration certificate. There is one tiny loophole to that, which is that if the animal was recently registered, you can use a stamped duplicate, um, which means that you haven't received the official papers back yet from ADGA. Um, the rules are kind of constantly changing on how old a stamped duplicate can be. It used to be 30 days from issuance, then it was 90 days from issuance, and right now, because of the problems ADGA is having, um, this has been extended, I believe, all the way to the end of 2023. Um, but you do need to, when you sign in to the show, when you get there, you have to prove that this is a registered animal, otherwise the animal can't compete at all. Um, also, the animal must not, if you are dealing with the Nigerian, be over height. When they walk into the ring, no matter how old they are now, even if they're only three months old, they are going to measure them to make sure they are within height for the breed. So does, that's 22 and a half inches, um, and in bucks, it's 23 and a half inches. So um, they must be in height um, to compete. Now they won't check those tattoos unless you win, but if you win and they can't say confirm that those tattoos match their papers, you will lose your award. Ah, don't do that. So always double check your tattoos um, as far in advance of a show as you can so that if you can't read them anymore, you can re-tattoo them and then you need to submit and get a fresh set of papers saying that your animal's been re-tattooed. I hope that doesn't happen to you. Okay. Now, when you get to the show, there will typically be a show order posted, and that will go by breed. It's nice when they tape this up on the physical ring um, at the show. So it might say Nubians go first, Nigerians go second, Alpines go third, etc., etc. Um, now, 
As I mentioned, you need to be listening because sometimes they change the show order at the last minute. Um, so you always need to be listening. So then what happens is, so let's say Nubians are going first. Then it goes by class. The class is an age group. So the typically the first age to go is going to be the youngest group. This will be the yearling milkers, those who are one year old who are first freshers. They will then compete against each other. Now this will repeat for two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and then typically there's a class that's considered five plus. So anything beyond five plus is considered an age doe or senior doe. So a five, six, seven, eight-year-old would actually all compete against each other. But typically we're only shown against our own age group because it's not really fair to compare a yearling milker to a five-year-old milker with four or five freshenings um, who's going to have a much more mature looking body. Uh, just like us humans, you know, we mature as we age. Um, so the age of your doe, so what class they should be in, is based upon their birth date on the day of the show. So literally, if your doe has turned three on the day of the show, she is now in the three-year-old class. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now let's say they've called in your class. You are in the yearling milker class. You are going to walk into the ring. If you are a Nigerian, you're going to be measured and walk under the stick. And typically you start by lining up all your goats. Doesn't matter what order you go in. Um, you just are gonna walk into the ring and then pose your goat and wait for all of the entries to enter the ring. Primarily, um, the judge will walk in and then ask you to walk. And that means you're going to start walking that animal around the ring. Most of the time, that animal is going to be on your right hand side. You don't ever want to get your physical body between you and the judge. There are times the judge crosses over and you need to um, go around and flip to the other side of your goat. But 90% of the time, you're gonna be walking your goat on the right hand side. Now the judge is going to be watching as you walk around. Um, usually the judge will stop you and then walk around and feel the ribs um, of every goat and also ask you how old they are and when they freshened. Sometimes they wanna know the birth date. They definitely wanna know what date she freshened. That means which day she gave birth for this lactation. And they want to know what number lactation this is. So you might have a three-year-old third freshener or you could have a three-year-old first freshener. That happens. And it's important to know because a doe's udder um, and capacity will typically increase with number of lactations. So this is important information for that judge to have, but this is information you should have memorized before you walked into the ring. Now you're gonna follow the instructions of the judge and you're gonna keep walking around the ring until they stop you. But typically as you're walking, they're going to start rearranging does. They're going to ask this doe here to go to the front of the line. They're gonna ask that doe here to go behind this other doe. And what that judge is doing is starting to place the class in their head. Um, don't get discouraged as this is going on because a lot can happen <laughs> in the few minutes that you're walking around the ring. And sometimes they even make last minute changes. Um, but by the end of it, the judge will stop you and he will, he or she will have placed the entire class in order from first through last. And then they will start at the head of the line and give their reasons. This doe is in first place because she excels in body capacity, so on and so forth down, down the line. Um, first to last. Um, and also this is, I'll just say a great learning opportunity to not only listen to what your goat, your judge says about your goat, but listen to what they're saying about the other goats. Um, you can learn so much about confirmation, um, just by watching and listening. Um, I should also mention that when you are walking around, if the judge is really like trying to assess and compare two goats that maybe have very similar attributes, <clears throat> he might have you walk them side by side. Um, you may also um, walk your does forwards oh, towards the judge and away from the judge if they want to see how they walk on those legs, if they're um, really straight um, on those legs or, you know, whether they toe out, things like that. 
um, that's all very normal and sort of part of this process as um, the judge is trying to decide um, the order of the class and who goes first to last. Now, um, don't be surprised if the judge also stops and like feels the texture of a doe's udder. Um, he may also um, pick up the feet um, of each goat. I've had one judge when I first started uh, really trying to decide between first place between two goats that were so equal they went down to basically how good was like your hoof trimming. Um, so um, then um, when that judge is satisfied with their placement and does first through last, um, then all of the goats will exit the ring. So let's say this was our yearling milker class. All of the yearling milkers will exit the ring and then the two-year-old class will come in and then we just do the exact same thing just like we did before. And then um, as we get through all of the age groups in the senior doe show, after we've done all of the ages and there's first place uh, uh, through all those groups, then at the very end, the judge will bring back in the first place winners from each age group. So typically that's five different does. So you're going to have your, your, um, your five-year-old plus first place, your four-year-old first place, three-year-old first place, second-year-old first place, and yearling milker first place. From that group, he is going to select the grand champion for that breed. So this is going to say that this was the very best Nigerian dwarf or a Nubian or Sonnen in the barn that day. Now, Whichever age group, like let's say it's the senior doe, the five-year-old who wins grand champion. Um, when the judge awards that grand champion, here's what needs to happen next. They want to see the second place five-year-old. So now if you did have a second place doe, you need to be right by the side of the ring, ready to go in, in case the same doe in your age group uh, got grand. Um, the reason this is, is because maybe the second best doe in the show was in the same age group. So that makes sense. So um, they will ask the second place in that age group to come in and now take the place in the lineup with the other does. So now the judge will pick the reserve grand champion. And after that is selected, um, then that show is considered over. So that was our senior doe show. Um, uh, senior doe Nigerians is now is now done for that ring. <laughs> so if you are going to a two ring show, a three ring show, a four ring show, you are then going to walk to whatever your next ring is and do the exact same thing all over again with a different judge. Um, it's important to note that when we are doing um, grand champion and reserve grand champion in our breed, that doe is shown with a full udder. So we uttered her up usually the night before the show. Um, we show her in the ring in her age group, and then we bring her back in for grand champion with a full udder. Okay, now if you won grand, at the end of all the breeds, so every breed in that ring in that show has a grand champion now you need to go back in one more time and the judge is going to pick best in show. So this means literally who is the best doe in the barn that day. Obviously that's like pretty exciting to win, right? Um, now they can't do best doe in show if you have multiple rings until every ring is finished. Every ring has grand champions and reserve champions for every breed. Because when you go in for best in show, they want to see an empty udder. An empty udder is almost sometimes just as important as a full udder. What they want to see is a doe that milks down to nothing. They want to see an udder that looks just like a floppy piece of skin. Um, that means that she milks everything out and she doesn't just have a lot of tissue that makes her udder look bigger than it really should be. So for best in show, the judge is going to look at the grand champion from each breed side by side and then decide which of those is truly the best doe in show. 
when that is done, you are actually, actually done. Obvi obviously, um, a goat show takes a lot of time because we need to go through not only each breed, but each age group in each breed. Now, if you are going to a senior and do junior doe show, which is super fun, the senior doe show has to be completely finished, right down to best in show, before we go to the junior doe show. So then we start all over from scratch. Junior does work exactly the same as um, senior does, but typically there are only three age groups. And again, this is based on their birth date. I've seen different names. Sometimes it's like beginner, intermediate, advanced, which basically means little tiny babies who are like less than two months old. And then like your, you know, three to six month olds. And then your dry yearlings, which are does that are one year old, but have not freshened yet. So anything being shown in the junior doe show does not have an udder and things being shown in the senior doe show do have an udder and it's very important the udder is a big part of the scorecard um, so um, there's no point in competing if your doe doesn't have an udder and then if you get really strategic you try to make sure that your udder looks as good as possible um, as big as possible um, in on show day. Um, if you are looking for more tips on practicing with your goat before the show, what you need to wear at the show, um, what you need to pack for the show. I do have a tutorial on that called preparing for your first ADGA show. I go into great detail. I even talk about underwear. Um, so do check that out. Um, and if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments. There's a lot to know about shows. Um, and I will be the first one to say that um, some shows break the rules and they do things a little bit differently. Um, so that is just how most ADGA shows work. Um, it does sound intimidating, but it's a lot of fun. See if you can go with someone else or be neck in a pen next to someone else who's done this before so they can help keep you keep track um, of where you are in the show and what is coming up next. Um, and remember that these tutorials are 100% brought to you by fellow dairy goat enthusiasts just like you who support my channel. Um, and I'm happy to help you become a better goat owner, a better goat breeder, and now a better goat showman. Have fun at your first show.